Welcome back to What You Missed, a video game news show where I discuss articles that occurred within days to a week ago that you may have missed that are important to the video game industry and possibly to you. Earlier this week, the Scorpio was made pretty simple by Digital Foundry's Rich, and this is coming from Eurogamer.net. You can check the description below for details. What it's going to be called when it comes out and what it looks like and how much it'll cost is something that they couldn't say. They speculated on this. They said that it probably will be around $500, and I think that matches up with the price point that we're seeing today for new consoles releasing, with the exception to Nintendo. Uh, they generally speaking are fairly pricey but they're not 599 US dollars and they did say that the form factor of the console will be pleasantly surprising which means that it's probably not going to be as big as the Xbox one because a lot of people call that a cable box so that's that's good that's really good but they couldn't tell like the specifics they did find out the full specs of the machine the CPU has eight custom x86 cores clocked at 2.3 gigahertz and that's important because x86 is a mainstream processor. It is not the PS3's cell processor. It is not a power PC. It is not anything that would be very, very difficult to program on. I know it says it's custom, but if it's x86 architecture, it means that pretty much anyone who has background in computer science will be accustomed with it a lot more than some unique processor that was made specifically for this and this alone. The graphics processor has 40 customized compute units clocked at 1172 megahertz which they say is a very high clock speed for a console, which it is, and it achieves the 6 teraflop performance figure that Microsoft was touting earlier. There's 12 gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM, which is really, really good. Um, a lot of PCs nowadays are just now getting up to GDDR5 for their main board, motherboard's RAM, not the graphics card, but the motherboard's RAM. It's something new that happened a year or two ago, and that is becoming way more mainstream stream now so that's really good and there's a faster one terabyte 2.5 inch hard drive I would have way rather had an SSD in this machine but I'm sure that would have jacked the price up just a bit more and we don't know 100% what the price is yet it does come with an ultra HD blu-ray drive which is really important to a lot of people moving into the 4k age they'll probably buy this over the PlayStation Pro like the Xbox one s it looks identical to the back they said with the input and output IO there's no connect port but the HD HDMI is retained, so that's important. And there is no external power brick. A lot of people don't like external power bricks. I don't mind them because it takes heat off of the console itself, so it's kind of a give and take. Do you want the heat to be outside of the console and have a big ugly power brick, or do you want it to be inside making your console a little bit hotter? So they explained and broke down what a lot of this meant, and I already put it mostly into my words, but here's a few facts that you might not know. Write it off the top the CPU is 30% faster. You might say, wow, that's not really a massive increase, man, to, you know, go out and spend four to $500 on something that seems more like a glorified PC. But the GPU is 4.6 times more powerful than the Xbox One's. Imagine that. What the Xbox One can do for games, which is pretty, pretty damn good, man, for consoles these days. And imagine that multiplied by 4.6 times. But don't get your hopes up too much. It seems every single generation we have consoles they try to push the console's looks to the limit instead of standardizing 60 frames per second. So, yeah, that's to be seen. Uh, the Xbox One originally had 5 gigabytes of much slower memory, and having this 12 gigabytes is a lot. On my own personal editing rig, I think there have only been a handful of times where I've ever gone over 12 gigabytes or 8 gigabytes. So it's very rare, but to have 4 gigabytes reserved for the system alone, which is still a lot of RAM to have reserved for a system, it frees up quite a bit of RAM for the game itself to be dedicated with. And you can look into videos about people who do games with 4 gigabytes of RAM, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and 16 gigabytes of RAM. And 8 gigabytes seems to be the sweet spot these days. So really good on them for doing that. And it does have the potential for 4K Ultra HD resolutions as well. That said, it really does seem like they're pushing that. So yeah, it is pretty much the Rolls Royce 
release of game consoles. I mean, I think Sony will probably come out a little bit later with something maybe slightly better, maybe slightly worse. It really does depend on what they're going to do here in response to Microsoft's console and the price point. I think we're going to see the Nintendo Switch excel and succeed quite a bit more than these consoles due to their price points and how ch much cheaper the Switch will be, but that's to be seen. Honestly, at the end of the day, as long as you're happy with your purchases, that's really all that matters. There's times where I'd rather play video games on a console. There's times where I'd rather play my games on a super nice PC. But at the end of the day, we're all gamers. So if this news excites you, let me know in the comments below. Let me know your technical aspects and knowledge based upon these specs and what you think's going to end up happening with this stuff. Did I overlook anything? Did I not focus enough on something for you? Let me know your feedback and like and share this to everyone, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really trying to get my views up and get these new stories out to people to inform them. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate your views on this video. And I've been your host, Proto Mario. And I'm signing out. As always, good gaming and God bless.